explore the MISP 2009 program, we will have available the first four exercises. Another video will explain some advanced exercises. Task number one, peg transfer. You are given two graspers for this task. The goal is to grab the peg with the non-dominant hand, transfer it to the dominant hand, and place it on the opposite side of the board. There is no importance given to the color of the peg nor the order in which they are transferred. Once all the pegs have been transferred, grasp them with the dominant hand, transfer to the non-dominant hand, and place them on the opposite side again. If you drop a peg out of the field of view, you cannot retrieve it. Task 2, Circle Cut. You are given one grasper and one pair of laparoscopic scissors for this task. You may choose to use them in either hand and are free to change hands at any time. To start the task, cut through the border to gain access to the circle and cut along the black line. Note, the gauze is two-ply, but the first layer on which the marking is made is the layer on which the accuracy of the task will be based. Many people find it easier to cut both layers. Task 4, extracorporeal knot. You will be given two needle drivers, a knot pusher, a pair of laparoscopic scissors, and a stitch. The goal is to place the stitch in the Penrose drain precisely in the marked dots. Please note, in order to introduce the stitch into the box, it must be grasped by the stitch itself and not by the needle. The tail of the stitch will hang outside of the trocar. Once the stitch is placed, Pull it back outside of the trocar while stabilizing the pen rows. The first throw of a square knot is thrown and the free end is threaded through the knot pusher as shown here. One hand is used to pull up on both ends of the stitch while the other is used to push the knot down. The second throw can be performed without removing the knot pusher by doing a one-handed knot using the needled end of the stitch. The knot is secured down while the other two ends are pulled up to create tension. A total of three throws of a square knot should be thrown. If you are not familiar with a one-handed knot, a two-handed knot can be done with a re-threading of the pusher with each throw. Again, the task is completed by cutting the stitch. Task 5, Intracorporeal Knot. You will be given two needle drivers, one pair of laparoscopic scissors, and a short stitch. Again, the aim is to place the stitch within the area of the black dots. But in this case, the knot will be tied entirely within the box. Pull the stitch through, leaving a relatively short tail as this will be easier to work with. The first throw is a double throw. Also notice that the heel of the needle is aligned with the driver it is wrapping around. For the next throw, the needle is transferred to the other hand, maintaining the alignment and only a single wrap is required for the next two throws. The needle is transferred for the third and final throw. And the task is again completed by cutting the stitch. Multi-use ligating loop instructions. Note, these are training tools, not sterile and not intended for clinical use. Although this is a multi-use device, the tube can only be broken once. Firmly grasp the multi-use ligating loop at the end opposite the loop. Break the tube at the scored line. 
the multi-use ligating loop is now ready for up to 10 uses. Please note to use a grasper instead of scissors to grab the endo-loop material to simulate making a final cut, as you would during the endo-loop task during the actual FLS exam. Do not use actual scissors or shears as this will damage the reusable endo-loop, no longer making it reusable. Resetting the loop. Grasp the slip knot on the looped appendage and slide the knot away from the appendage to loosen and release the loop. Slide the slip knot toward the tube. The ligating loop is now ready for use again. With proper use, the multi-use ligating loop may be reset up to 10 times.